So hi everyone, I hope you're doing well, wherever you are, whatever time it is. So let's do the chanting straight away before our meditations and Dharma talk. Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Udham saranam gachami, dhammam saranam gachami, sangham saranam gachami, dudayam be budham saranam gachami, dudayam be dhammam saranam gachami. Dudayam be sangham saranam gachami. Tadayam be buddham saranam gachami. Tadayam be dhammam saranam gachami. Tadayam be sangham saranam gachami. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Sanghaya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Sanghaya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Sanghaya. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. Through the positive potential I create by practicing the six parameters, may I soon attain enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. Through the positive potential I create by practicing the six parameters, may I soon attain enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Through the positive potential I create by practicing the six parameters, may I soon attain enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and its causes. May they be free from suffering and its causes. May they never be parted from the happiness beyond suffering. May they abide in equanimity, free of bias, attachment to the near and aversion from the far. I shall cause this great compassionate Buddha, please inspire me to be able to do so. Reverently, I prostrate with my body, speech and mind and present clouds of every types of offerings, actual and mentally transformed. I confess all of my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in all the virtues of all holy and ordinary beings. Please remain until cyclic existence ends and turn the wheel of Dharma for all sentient beings. I dedicate the virtues of myself and others to the great enlightenment. However innumerable all sentient beings are about to save them all, however inexhaustible my delusions are about to extinguish them all, However immeasurable the Dharma teachings are about to master them all, however endless the Buddha's way is about to follow it completely. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Kayata Hum Gati Gati Paragati Parasam Gati Bodhisattva. Tayata um gati gati para gati para sum gati bodhisu. Tayata um gati gati para gati para sum gati bodhisu. So now time for some meditation. Initially to release the tension from the body. Whenever we have the opportunity, we should practice the meditation. You definitely should set aside some time every day to practice. Try to keep it consistent at the time of day, 
and for the length of time that you practice for. And you could say this is for this type of meditation as well as the breath meditation and love and kindness meditation, whether you do them all together or separate times, you should definitely do that. We do have the time for it. You know, I remember seeing uh, an anonymous quote on Facebook um, quite a while ago that said, if you have time for Facebook, you have time to meditate. So if you have time for TV, you have time to meditate. You have time to go for a walk. And even if your meditation is while you're walking, you have time to meditate. But then also at different times, you know, if you have a little bit of spare time, then meditate, even if it's only a few minutes. Or you can meditate at the traffic light. If you're driving, don't close your eyes, though. Or if you're a passenger in the car, on the train, or the bus, you can do meditation. Very, very helpful for our mental health and our physical health. So now forget everything I just said and let's gently close our eyes, lips gently touching with the tongue resting on the upper palate above the top teeth in the mouth. Nice balanced shoulders, not slouching, not rigid. If you are sitting, keep your back upright. Try to keep a balanced body in whatever position you're in. And now bring your mind inside the body, starting at the tips of the toes, working your way up the legs, into the shoulders and down to the tips of your fingers, and then back up to the top of your head. So release whatever tension you have in the body. So take a, a few moments to do this. And when you have completed this, scan the body once more, just to see if there's any more tension that you can release. And now bring your focus to placing the mind initially at the tip of your nose and placing your mind onto the feeling of the breath. As you breathe in your nose, past your throat, past the bronchial area, and all the way into your lungs. You'll notice that the lungs expand as they fill with air. And then they compress as you breathe out, and the air leaves the lungs. As you breathe in, it's quite cool as it passes your throat. And as you breathe out, it's quite warm as it passes your throat on the way out your nose. So focusing on the breath, breathing in, breathing out. You could also add the extra technique of counting the breaths, one in breath, one out breath is one and so on. But don't count past 10. If you become distracted on the way to counting to 10, then go back to one at that time. So while you are focusing on your breath, if thoughts arise or any mental activity arises, don't cling to it. Don't grasp at it. Don't try to force it away or deny it. But simply and gently, let it go naturally by replacing the mind back onto the breath. Don't be disheartened if you have to do this often. It's not a problem. This is the process of meditation. And we will improve over time with practice, with consistent 
practice and accurate practice. And if your mind starts to become dull or sleepy, then replace it back onto the breath more brightly. This way, replacing the mind back onto the breath is the antidote for both the agitated mind as well as the dull mind. So now, not too tight, not too loose, not too much, not too little. Middle path. Let's practice like this in silence for a little bit.
So now we can feel very pleased with ourselves for engaging in this short session. We can feel very pleased and rejoice, rejoice in doing the chanting, recitation of the Buddhist verses, or prayers and then in the mantras. You can be really happy with yourself and rejoice in letting go of the tension in the body, therefore also letting go of the tension in the mind. Working on your concentration, improving your concentration by practicing the breath meditation. And also you can rejoice now in what we're about to do. Metabhavanna or loving kindness meditation. Fill yourself with universal loving kindness. The feeling is very important. Fill yourself with this loving kindness feeling or feeling of loving kindness. And you can also utilize visualization where you fill your whole being with white light or white nectar. Fill yourself with appreciation and respect, friendship, harmlessness, non-violence, honesty, forgiveness, all of these good qualities that you already have in abundance. Now we should nurture them, including this loving kindness, which covers all of them really. Nurture this loving kindness and all of these good qualities. Protect them. Improve them. Increase them and eventually perfect them. And now have your loving kindness radiate outwards, initially to your loved ones, family and friends. Filling them with this universal loving kindness too. Once again, it could be that just a feeling, or it could be that you're utilizing visualization, radiating the white light out of your heart center and filling them with this white light, or if you prefer white nectar, very similar. Have the wish that they be happy and engage in the causes of happiness, that they are free from suffering and free from engaging in the causes of suffering, that they are peaceful and free from conflict. <laughs> now let's gradually radiate this loving kindness out further and further. Now also include those people that you're indifferent towards, may regard as strangers, whether you know them a little or not at all. Extend this loving kindness out to them as well. Once again with the feeling or utilizing the visualization techniques. May they also be happy and have the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they be peaceful, free from conflict. And radiate further still and include those that you may regard as enemies those people that you find very difficult or for whatever reason, dislike. Fill them with the universal loving kindness as well, the feeling of this universal loving kindness, as well as the visualization techniques of filling them with the white light or nectar. May they also be happy and have the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering, free from the causes of suffering. May they be peaceful and free from conflict. 
May all of these people be happy, free from suffering and be peaceful and work their way at their own pace towards unsurpassed supreme enlightenment. So now let's radiate out further and further distance wise, starting initially around your immediate area. Extend this loving kindness to all living beings, not only people. All the living beings that live on the land, under the land, in the waters, both salt water as well as fresh water. Fly through the air. Whether they are born from wombs, eggs, moisture, or through transformation. All sentient beings, whether weak or strong, great or small, short or tall. Seen or unseen, near or distant, born or to be born. Extend this loving kindness to all of them. And now, throughout your whole state or county, and other states and counties throughout your whole country. To all of the living beings throughout this whole world, to other countries that you're familiar with and have an affinity towards, those that you're indifferent towards, as well as those that you may have some sort of negative feelings towards, and throughout all of the waters throughout this world, the oceans, the lakes, the rivers, the streams and ponds. Have your loving kindness pervade this whole planet, all the way to the center of the earth and to the outermost atmosphere. And now beyond this world alone, throughout the whole solar system. And other solar systems throughout the whole galaxy. And all of the galaxies throughout the universe. And to your loving kindness pervades throughout infinite space. And also be present here and now to recite the dedication prayer. Due to this merit, may I soon attain the enlightened state of the Buddha, so that I may be able to liberate all sentient beings from their suffering. May the precious body, Chitta, not yet born, rise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. And may the precious view of Shunyata, not yet born, rise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Sangaya. So I decided to do slightly longer meditations today. Um, first of all, because there was, uh, I think, three requests um, for that, just a one-off um, from three different people. I think all of them view the video later. And uh, even though I did direct them to a, a one-hour-long meditation instruction video on the YouTube channel and reposted it on Facebook. I thought I'd do it again today. But also because we are now um, having commentary on the eight verses of thought transformation. And as you know, you've already been introduced to it. And we are having some overviews now with some different information. And then, of course, we'll go into it in detail. Uh, in a few weeks' time, um, we're going to um, switch from the loving kindness meditation to what we call tonglen in Tibetan, which means tonglen means giving and taking. Okay, I won't, I won't give any details right now, but I thought we should do that. And this relates to the seventh verse of these eight verses of thought transformation. Okay, so we take the suffering of others upon yourself. Um, of course, you, you don't actually do that. <laughs> you, you won't experience the suffering. It actually has the opposite effect. 
where you're decreasing your self-centeredness and increasing your compassion and love and kindness. Uh, but also then you give away everything that you find pleasing to others for their benefit. But also, once again, this benefits yourself. And so I thought rather than... Um, rather than just doing it when we're having commentary on the, set, the seventh verse, that we'll actually start fairly shortly to do it every week while we are doing this commentary. We, can, we will then go back to love and kindness meditation because I know that you guys really like it. And so um, once we go on to the next subject, of course, after this subject in a few months' time, or whatever time it takes, uh, we will do some Q&A as we've been doing in the past and then we'll go on to another subject after that. We'll probably go back to loving kindness meditation during that period. Okay, so the eight verses of thought transformation. Number one, with the wish to attain enlightenment for the welfare of all sentient beings who are more precious than a wish-fulfilling jewel, I will constantly practice holding them dear. Whenever I'm with others, I will practice seeing myself as the lowest of all, and from the very depth of my heart, I will respectfully hold others as supreme. In all actions, I will examine my mind in the moment a disturbing action arises in danger in my or disturb, disturbing attitude arises in danger in myself and others, I will firmly confront and avert it. Whenever uh, I meet a person of bad nature is overwhelmed by negative energy and intense suffering. I will hold such a rare one dear as if I have found a precious treasure. When others out of jealousy mistreat me with slander, abuse and so on, I will practice accepting the defeat and offering the victory to them. When someone I have benefited and in whom I pl place great trust hurts me very badly, I will practice seeing that person as my supreme teacher. In short, I will offer directly and indirectly every benefit and happiness to all beings, my mothers. And in secret, I will take upon myself all their harmful actions and sufferings. Without these practices being defiled by the stains of the eight worldly concerns, by perceiving all phenomena as illusory, I will practice without grasping to release all beings from the bondage of the disturbing, unsubdued mind and karma. Okay, so... Last week, we went through the first two, the first one with the wish to attain enlightenment for the welfare of all Indian beings who are more precious than a wish fulfilling jewel. I will constantly practice holding them dear. We've had our first overview of that one and there will be another one in, in a little bit of time, maybe next week or whatever. Um, when I'm with others, I will practice myself as the lowest of all and from the very depth of my heart, I will respectfully hold others as supreme. And we also had an overview of that one last week and we started to cover the third one. In all actions, I will examine my mind, and the moment a disturbing attitude arises, endangering myself and others, I will firmly confront and avert it. So I will continue doing that uh, right now. I think we have about another 11 minutes or so to go. So we'll get through a couple of these or maybe more um, until um, we finish this first overview, uh, which is just coming off the top of my head. I actually haven't planned anything. Um, for this, which is actually, before I started doing the Zoom classes, um, was most Dharma classes. I knew what I was going to talk about. And of course, we work off text sometimes. But whatever comes at that time, I always feel that that's natural, you know, natural way of teaching. And then also, um, I'm not prejudging um, you guys. But during the Zoom classes, I have to be a bit more organized. So that's why I write notes so I don't forget this and that because they are so short. I want to give you as much information with hopefully not too much information, which we can do on occasions. And then you can take this teaching away with you and then contemplate it, um, contemplate on it until the next class. And of course, I remind you again, I haven't reminded you for a while, but you can shoot me um, text messages in, in Messenger on my phone or email, or call if you like, uh, then uh, we can discuss if you have questions related to this. It's good if you do it in, in text so it's actually recorded, and then I can remember to write, maybe write it down so I can share it with others at a different time as well. So you should have a lot of questions in relation to these teachings, to this commentary. Okay, so please um, ask them. I like to say often that if we want answers, ask questions. Of course, you can look yourself, and sometimes you trust yourself, you know, and you're confident with yourself, you can come up with the correct answers. But if you ask others, 
especially some people maybe have a bit, bit more experience than yourself in certain areas, then actually maybe you get a different um, view of something, maybe more of a wider view of something. So you come to the some answer of your own question yourself, and then you ask them, somebody and they may be able to give you, I may be able to give you a different view of it. To use the example I use often, and that is looking at a house, you say, show me the house, you're in the front of the house, there's the house, and then maybe somebody else will show you the side of the house. Or maybe we, I will show you all of the house, okay? In the walls, in fact, to know the house, we have to knock the house down and then build it back up again, don't we? So that's contemplating using the passion, the technique of investigating, analyzing, realizing the impermanent nature, realizing the nature of suffering and the no self and etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so um in all actions i will examine my mind so in all actions all actions of the body all our physical actions of the speech all of our speaking and the actions of the mind so all of our thoughts attitudes all of these mental activities that we go through as well. Remember, we always have mental images in our mind. We always have some sort of mental chatter. Even if the mental chatter is saying mindfulness, in the Namo Buddhaya, still some mental chatter. Then we also have some mental feelings, whether pleasurable, unpleasant or neutral, and also always have some sort of belief and opinions and the like. Okay. So we need to check our mind with these and make sure that our intention is pure, that our intention, maybe we're not fully pure yet, but good intentions. And that there, then our actions from our body and our speech and our mind will follow suit. The more we do this, the more it becomes natural to do so. So look after your intention. Remember, this is where karma is created as well. Important to recall that often. Then um, in the moment, a disturbing attitude arises. So as if we really are being mindful, aware, conscientious, really paying attention to our intentions in our mind, then we're going to pick it up straight away if a disturbing attitude arises. If any unwholesome attitude arises, even before, eventually, even before it becomes thoughts, thought, thought, thought. Okay, so really work your way to, um, you can see how this is much deeper than it sounds. It sounds just like, oh, shouldn't do the bad thing, you should do the good thing. But actually, you're looking deep into your mind at the intention behind your actions. As soon as that negative, unwholesome or disturbing attitude arises, that time, let it go by applying pure awareness, non-attached awareness. Like I say, even you go deeper into the mind, into the intention, even the bad intention there is shy. As soon as you pay pure awareness to it, it will melt away. It may come back straight away because of old habits, but then you apply the antidote again, apply the pure awareness to it again, it will melt away again until it starts to become more natural. <laughs> Endangering myself and others. So whenever this disturbing attitude arises, we should let it go. Any attitude that endangers ourselves and others. Endanger now, you could take this on face value. You know, this could be really bad intention to hurt yourself, to hurt others, things like that. And then you start to follow through with the actions, first of all, with thoughts, planning, then words may even, or then, of course, physical actions maybe as well. But really, when you think about it, really the endangering comes down to we're practicing towards enlightenment. We're practicing thought transformation. In a short way, you could say we are transforming our mind from the negative thoughts and the meaningless thoughts to the positive thoughts, to the bodhicitta thoughts or intentions towards enlightenment. If we have this, these negative um, attitudes mentally, this is stopping us from practicing and continuing the flow towards enlightenment. This is really what mean, means by endangering ourselves. 
We're putting our practice and our path to enlightenment and our abilities to be able to practice accurately, correctly and accurately, and then work our way to enlightenment as soon as possible. We're endangering that. We're stopping that. And the same with others. If uh, First of all, if you are interacting with others, um, keep this good intention, avoid the bad intention, because this could rub off onto them. This could be an influence on them. But also, if they see that you are falling off the path, once again, this could influence them. Also, they themselves could become disheartened. We don't want that. We want to help others to be enthusiastic in their practice. We are all interrelated. You know? So in a sense, you could say if uh, we're endangering ourselves, we are endangering others and vice versa. Then um, I will firmly confront and avert it. I've already covered that. So pay a pure awareness to it and then make the enthusiastic effort to change that and to transform your mind at that time to becoming virtuous. So we've only got two minutes to go, but I'll go on to the next one and then we can continue with it in the following weeks. I have no plans for time. I'm actually not, I'm going to make an effort not to predict when we're going to finish these. I'm going to make an effort to not predict when we're even going to finish one word, okay? Um, I've made that error in the past with these Zoom classes right back to when we first started them. Oh, we're going to take four weeks. And then six months later, we're still doing it. So I'm not going to do that anymore, okay? If I do do it, do do, then I apologize. And then I will become aware, let it go, let it melt away. So whenever I meet a person of bad nature who is overwhelmed by negative energy and intense suffering, I will hold such a rare one dear as if I have found a precious treasure for so often. If we come into contact with a person like this, the first thing we want to do is get away from them, isn't it? Or if for whatever reason, if we're feeling combative, maybe you want to fight against them, you know, and become like that yourself, which is very unhealthy. All right, so we are transforming, transforming the mind to be more compassionate. For a person like this needs your compassion needs our compassion, needs our help. And as we help them, we are helping ourselves. Similar again, isn't it? Can you see how this is pointing towards interdependency as well? All of these verses, not separate. We are not separate from others. So we should practice these two benefits, benefiting self, benefiting others, and vice versa. Same thing. So I'll see you next week. Please take very good care of yourself, both mentally and physically. Study well, practice the Dharma well, and share the Dharma to the best of your ability as well. I rejoice in your meritorious.